Doesn't this night kiting footage look surreal? To be honest, it's mostly because of a really expensive camera. The reality looks more like this, pretty close to pitch black. Through the rest of the video, I'll share with you how we accomplished the previous shots, some of the biggest challenges we encountered, and the lessons we learned. So let's go back to the very beginning. Tonight we are going to be attempting night kiting. This is the first time we've ever done it at our home spot and we're hoping that the clouds will clear and we'll get a really nice shot with the moon. Um, but we always have tomorrow, so. Nicholas, have you ever night kited? No, this is gonna be my first time, so I'm quite excited. Don't know what to expect. But uh, you know what? I'm gonna make it fun, so we'll see. Something we got right from the start was having more beach helpers than actual riders. Prepping and launching a kite required multiple people because the wind direction was onshore and not ideal for our spot. It was nice to have someone pointing the flashlight as it really wasn't easy to see. A big mistake was attaching glow sticks to the kite. These would get tangled in the bridles, rendering the kite uncontrollable. Eventually, we had to remove them from the kites altogether. We also quickly realized that our own camera was not up to the task of capturing anything decent as the low light performance was non-existent. We played with the settings, which made it a bit better. Our camera actually reflected reality as it was mostly pitch black. Luckily, we had Andrew who saved the day with his new Sony a7S Mark III camera, which made the footage look almost like daylight. Trust me, it was nowhere near this bright. Thank you, Andrew, for filming us. While we got one or two nice shots in the end, we were unsatisfied with the results due to the combination of a tough wind direction, low wind, and clouds that covered the moon. Luckily, the forecast for the next night looked much better, so we had to give it another shot. We're back at the beach, it's night number two. Yesterday we did successfully night kite, however we did make some mistakes. There was some miscommunication between where the kiter should be, where the cameraman should be. Uh, so the shots weren't really all that good. Uh, so we're definitely hoping to improve it again tonight. We've got lots of light this time and slightly different direction of wind, which will also help. So yeah, let's go set up and do some more night kiting. Mr. Light Bulb. I light it up, my friend. So, Halloween is over, but the party ain't about to stop. And guess what, guys? Everybody, everybody, put your sunscreen on right now. Woo! While I forgot to reapply my sunscreen, we did not forget about BB talking. Thanks, Ivano. As this time, it was pivotal to communicate between the cameraman and at least one rider in order to get the right shots. We also made sure that all boards had lights on them because if you lose your board after a bail, it will be impossible to find without any lights. Sit up, what are you guys waiting for? Instead of glow sticks, I used only LED lights on my kite. We bought them at the dollar store and attached them to the little connection lines in such a way that it was impossible for them to get tangled. Yeah, I was hoping that Lori would have this. Back too, because we're going to get, oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is my okay. lit up helmet. Put some string lights in there. Put the battery pack in a Ziploc bag inside of a pocket inside my dry suit, so hopefully, hopefully this lasts, but it may not. We'll see. Yo, that's it, buddy. No one brought my oh. address. When we hit the water, it was literally pitch black as the moon was not out just yet. I used string lights on my helmet while the other guys used headlamps. This was great for illuminating our immediate surroundings. Once the moon rose over downtown Toronto, it got much brighter and it was truly an epic backdrop to kite to. our kite beach is tricky during the day, so as you can imagine, it was that much more difficult in the dark. I overshot the landing area and the tip of the kite got stuck in the tree. Luckily, our amateur arborist Scotty knew what to do. 
Wow, Scotty, you're good at this. Have you done this before? All right, so we're just finishing up our second night of night kiting. Um, it was awesome. We had perfect conditions. It was like steady 16 knots. I was on my 12 meter sole. Um, it was all great until I attempted a dark slide. I didn't complete the loop and I dropped the kite in the water. Same story that I tell all the time. But um, yeah, luckily I was able to relaunch the kite because the wind was slightly offshore. So that would have been a very sketchy swim in the pitch black. Uh, but yeah, relaunched it, made it back and kept kiting for a bit longer. Enjoyed the session thoroughly and hopefully the footage turned out this time. It was really good, very interesting. Especially when this, like it was first, when the moon was just coming up, it was awesome. It was nice and quiet. Water was super still, flat. Then when it came up and you got a nice visual of just the moon over the freaking lake, it was beautiful. You know what, tonight was way better on the southwest. Nice and flat water, especially when you're falling. It's, it, it, it was just, it was surreal, man. I really enjoyed And you know what, falling at night, you have to really rely on your senses. And you know what, I think this falling at night really helped my skills, you know, added a different level. Hey, it was an amazing session, warm southern winds in October. Pfft, next level, next level, you have no idea. Too bad my, uh, my little uh, illumination light here got tangled around the tip when, uh, when I was landing, so I had to abort, uh, abort the session early. But I was there for the best time, not a long time. So that's what it is. I'm gonna do it again soon. So yeah, as always guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. All right, that's it, bye.